Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would talk about what really happened on my first day of school just to give you guys some tips if you're going back to school for the second semester you have an ESA or um, a service dog or if you are starting your first year of college during the second semester of college I thought you guys would want to know what really happened and what to be prepared for in case this happens to you. Thank you guys for suggesting this video. Of course I'll leave my Instagram right here since you guys did see a little glimpse into what did really happen my first day of school of college um so let's get into it. So many of you know that this is my first time ever bringing Pina to a school setting. I never brought him in high school because he wasn't ready. I didn't think he was ready. Prior to the first day, I sat down, had a meeting with the disabilities director, and basically went over, you know, how a service dog should act, Con you know, etc. Normal, basic stuff. So I thought, okay, well they really know what they're talking about. The only issue was they did ask for a certificate of training. Now this could either mean training as in, okay, he's been to an obedience class, or it means, in this case, it unfortunately meant that he needed to have a certificate to be a service animal, which either way is not legal to ask. Um, you can only ask two legal questions. I'll put number one right here so you guys can read it and number two right here. Those are the only two questions you can legally ask, period. So I thought it was totally appropriate. I didn't know how many, you know, service dogs they had before. I learned recently by going to the seminar that they've had four other service dogs before Peanut and I thought, okay, well that's a good sign they've had um, experience with this, and I'm not the first one to do this, it's okay. Kind of weird that they asked for a certificate, but I thought, hey, the more they know, the better. They have to know that he's real, you know. I thought I was just doing something to protect Pina and I, and I really, really did not expect it to be what it actually became. She said that I could give her the certificate on the first day of school and that would be all good. And I thought, okay, well I'm meeting with her, it's going to be good. We're meeting at the beginning of the day, like just get it out of the way, certificate, whatever. So we went in and you know, Peanut, you know how Peanut acts, he's acting professional, he's healing, he's doing everything that he needs to. We get into the office to turn in our certificate which I still at that time thought weird. My dad is educated also with service animals, so he thought it was a little weird. This is where things kind of turn for us. Uh, she did not accept that as the certificate that she wanted. This was very confusing because I didn't. she didn't clarify what the certificate needed to be. Please remember you don't need to do this. This is not something you need to do to enter school or a college. All you need to give them is your vet records and you should be good. She expected it to be a certificate from a fake website saying that he is a service animal and Bruh. that doesn't make any sense. If you guys know the law, you know that there is no certification for an animal to become a service animal and there is no certificate for ESAs, etc. Apparently, I've been asked to give a fake certificate to the school because people have done that in the past, which does not... Hmm. I don't want to say that they have been fooled, but they could have definitely been fooled. She showed me the USA dog registration, service dog registration website that someone before prior to my year has shown her and that is definitely a website where you just click, get your certificate for $50, pay your fee, and you're a service dog. I tried to explain to her that this was not a legitimate website, that these websites are absolutely illegal and they have no meaning between um, what is a real service dog and what is a fake service dog and when I was trying to explain she continued to cut me off saying that I was lying and not telling the truth about Peanut and that I needed to get the certificate to prove he's a service animal before he could be allowed on campus. I started to strictly say no this is fake you've been duped like this is not a real thing and she just continued to say no no you're lying like you, you can't do this which doesn't make sense so i started to panic and peanut alerted i was kind of raising my voice because i wasn't 
I wasn't having it. Obviously, she kept saying that I was lying. You can't say if someone's lying if they're literally trying to just explain the laws. She kept saying that she knew the laws, but I pulled up my ADA website because I have that on my homepage of Google just in case something like this happens. Show her, I think it's like question 15 or something, saying, do they need to have a certificate to be a service animal? It said no. She said that that was a fake website even though it is ADA.gov, which if you are in school, you should know that's a reliable website. They teach this. Since I started to get louder, my dad was in the waiting room waiting for me and um, the other head of disability came over and said like, what's the problem? I was crying, I was getting red, I was heated, I was shaking, Peanut needed to alert me. I didn't know what to do, this was my first day of school. I had a class to get to, like everything was terrible. And she was so kind, I still thank her to this day. She was she was on, my, not my side, but like the ADA side saying, hey, if you don't know the laws, maybe you should just call the ADA hotline, maybe educate yourself before you try and throw a well-behaved animal off property, because you literally can't do that. I need to call the head, like the ADA hotline, and I said, yes, you do, because that's the law. And she kept continuing to say, No, it's, it's not. Like, she just kept cutting me off every time I tried to say or explain something. And that made it even harder to talk to her and try and reason with calm voice, the calm voice and a soothing voice and say, Listen, just please educate yourself. I literally couldn't do that at that point. Like, I was so worked up. I was crying. I was huffing. It didn't even work out how I wanted it to be. I probably looked like a mess when I came out of there. It was awful. She decided to check with her disability rules and regulation people and said, Your dog cannot be on campus until we get this figured out. And obviously you can't do that unless your dog is uh, misbehaving, which he was definitely not. I would hope that they would research the laws before when they heard or before they heard that a service animal, a new service animal was coming to campus. Maybe to freshen up your laws, maybe to um, take a look at the laws if they changed. So we waited throughout the day, I went through class, it was hard but I did it because <laughs> I had to do it without peanut but it was okay. That interaction was at the beginning of my day and it did not put the school in a very nice position for me. I didn't think highly of them anymore. I, my standards went down, like, I felt like this because everyone was accepting of him, and then as soon as that happened, it lowered, like, five tiers, like, it, it was, it was pretty bad. She didn't even say sorry, no, she didn't even say sorry, I forgot, she said sorry, like, a month ago. She said that I was right, and that Pina could stay on campus, and I cannot tell you how worked up I got over that, um, I got so heated and then I got a sigh of relief and then all my emotions, you know, when that happens and you're already struggling, how it gets kind of jumbled and you don't know what to do but cry, that's literally what happened to me. If you are having a service animal or ESA, I think it is highly important for you to educate yourself on the laws, top to bottom, read it through, I don't care what you got going on, you gotta read it because that is your life now, you are bringing that animal or dog or horse in public with you. That is your safety security blanket and you need to be educated on what to do in case this happens. Um, it is not a pleasant experience being told that you don't know anything about your disability rights and your disability at all. Um, having your dog being taken off property because he is a service animal, because they are not educated, it is not fun. Uh, I suggest that you guys go along and really communicate, really deeply communicate with your school before any of this happens. Um, ever since then, she has been asking me for top advice of service animals around the campus. She's asked me the laws. I have been the go-to person for that and I am really happy that I am. Um, they have made a bigger effort to get along and intact with the laws. I really appreciate that uh, from them. We did have a service dog talk a while ago, uh, maybe two months ago or so, and I did film it. My computer is not letting me upload it though, 
but I'm trying to get that out for you guys so you guys understand what schools need to hear. People will challenge you and it's not fair for people to challenge you about a disability or anything uh, related to that, about your rights. I think that is something that you should be in control of. You should know what you're talking about. Thank you guys so much for watching. I did want to make this video because I haven't made it and I feel like I should have made it, especially with the new semester coming up. I think it's good for everyone to know what to expect and what to do in case this happens to them. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Who's that dog? Mr. Peanut Butter. Give it dog a bone. Who's that dog? Mr.